Hey everyone, welcome to week 21, day five. This is Friday, this is our last day on this ongoing, very tough, this is a very hard thing to kind of get a grasp on, like I've said uh, the past couple of days, this week of the whole and the part. So we're gonna finish today by doing something that I did on Spanish Tuesdays, which was I am actually gonna paint this painting today on two separate sessions and try to see if I can get a kind of firmer grasp on how my whole of the picture, my intentions that are behind identifying the whole of the picture can actually translate also into the little details that I decide to further develop. So let's see how we do today. Bye. Remember, next week, new theme. So we'll see you guys next week. Okay, let's get started. For today, this is our last day on our The Whole and the Part week. And I think I'm going to go back to doing a two-session painting. Now, fundamentally, they are different from just Alla Prima paintings because even though I'm not planning the painting, just knowing exactly that I want it to be a two-layer painting, in the sense that I'm not making decisions in the first session knowing that I'm going to be able to manipulate them in a certain way. What I kind of do with these two session paintings is just almost have a block in available to me in the second session and then just further the development of specific forms that pique my interest in the second session. It is going to be, in terms of the formal execution of the painting, a little bit akin to what I did on Tuesdays with the uh, painting of the roses. Now with that one, I was maybe a little more conscious about the quality of the line work that I was going to have to do when I was trying to find the designs and the composition through those shapes. But today it's going to be actually a little bit sketchier when I introduce those lines because I want to, in a way, kind of reestablish my drawing based on the gesture, and I guess this is the important part, based on the gesture that I had available to me in that initial blocking. So I want to be bold with the blocking so it gives me expressive possibilities that I can then adjust my drawing, my second layer drawing, let's call it that, when I have to reinterpret those shapes in my second session. This is the way I kind of work. I don't want to say this is the way because if if anything, I think you guys have seen through the uh, extension of this project that I don't really have a way of working. I don't really know how I paint. I know that I approach painting in a specific way that I hope is faithful to whatever it is I'm painting. And not just in terms of the subject matter. It doesn't really rely upon the object that I'm painting or the person that I'm painting or the uh, lighting condition that I'm painting or the space that I'm painting. I don't change my tune based on subject matter because I don't feel that that stimulus is enough to warrant a change in an approach. I think that would be terribly superficial. What I try to base my execution on is what I want to see in my painting. And I think that that's what's most important. So in this one, there was a sort of angst in Danny's look that when I blocked it in, I was like, okay, there's a lot of raw energy in this blocking, but I want to further develop it. And I don't want it to be masses of color. I don't want to have... Um, a development of form that is just brushstroke against brushstroke. I want to see if I can emphasize those qualities, those very kind of interior expressive qualities that I see in that look with my drawing marks. I, I want to see if I can strengthen those emotions through my drawing marks. And then hopefully in the end, the mix of that mark making plus my decisions of color that are constructed upon the initial color choices, hopefully that in the end will create a strong, strong painting. Why am I interested in having both block-in moments and then development moments through paint and also mark making that could echo drawing decisions? Because I think that all those three moments are very, very important and very powerful. And trying to balance those out 
is also something that has to do with part and whole. Blocking referring a lot more to the essence of whole, while specificity in drawing maybe refers to and points to smaller forms. In formal terms, we can also associate certain acts or the way we put them to use in a painting with developmental stages of the painting that can, in turn, point to an idea of wholeness or an idea of a specific part. It was cool to do this transition from yesterday's painting because I really felt that yesterday's painting was a good painting for me. I'm not saying it is a good painting. I try not to make judgments when I paint. I either just like a painting because it just resonates with me, but I think that that's absolutely subjective. I don't think I'm a good objective judge of when I paint well or not, but I think it resonated with me. And like I said, it had to do with doing something that I was afraid to do. And not just about conquering this thing, because it's not. It's not about conquering fear. I'm always going to have fear of something while I paint. That is just unavoidable. That's almost like having respect for nature and knowing that we are not starting with a level playing ground. We are just attempting to understand the nature of things while we paint. It was very important for me to say, let me try and understand this. Let me make an effort to try and understand this. And I, I was afraid. I was, you know, horrified while I was painting it. Again, not that the subject matter horrified me. It's just that I wasn't really sure of how to approach it or if I had an idea of how to approach it, I thought that even with that idea that was going to aid me in trying to understand it in a simple manner, even just by holding on to those precepts, it was going to be hard. It still depended on me trying to make intelligent decisions. And sometimes we start doubting ourselves and we start almost believing and convincing ourselves that we are not up for it, that we are not going to have either the ability or the experience to make those decisions, and it's best to just not try and do it. And that's, I think, ultimately why we fail, because we failed even before we started painting. We are in a mindset where we believe that we don't have what it would take to learn something from the act of painting this thing that horrifies us. It's not the fact that we are going to be better just because we were able to paint it. That doesn't mean anything. What's important is that we understand the act of painting it as a sort of confrontation with this fear, but it doesn't mean that this thing in itself is something that's horrifying. This thing was just a palm tree and I'm just painting you know, sunset just hitting a palm tree and that's about it it is as arbitrary as anything in this universe that I could have chosen to paint but it, it was just the idea that I had formed in my head what was blocking me and I think that that's what's most important again yesterday I felt that there was a lesson in there in just yes humility to understand that when I approach something that feels bigger than me the answer is always to fall back upon fundamentals of painting, but it also taught me that, you know, by doing this painting, it doesn't mean that every single painting that I do has to be executed in the same way. This was just the answer to a very specific calling, and it had a very specific goal. And the painting in itself was a very specific goal I had traced for myself, but it doesn't mean that today I have to try and look for something that I'm afraid of and try to find like the same conditions that scared me with this palm tree in the first place to see if I can tackle this, this new painting. No, every time I'm taping a piece of paper or board or um, linen on my paint box, I'm horrified. I'm always thinking, I'm, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, the result is probably going to be terrible. And we're actually recording this. So there's going to be literally a record of how terrible my attempt was, which can just double the uh, frustration. So every single time, every, every single time, I feel that this is something that's going to be tough. This is something that's going to be incredibly tough. What's been probably most difficult about these days and I guess this is something that I can associate with some moments in my personal life, is that when there's an atmosphere in the outside world, when there is a consciousness in the outside world that is telling you that there's probably far more important thing than painting, 
you know, that this is not a moment to just paint. This is a moment to do, you know, stuff that has to do with the nature of us as human beings. We can really just stop and say, well, why paint? Why paint at all? Like painting doesn't matter. The act of painting is nothing. Paint is nothing. Who cares about painting? Even speaking about painting could be deemed as just something trivial or that trivializes that which is incredibly important. And of course, there's nothing in my life that would echo what is going on right now. But in my personal life, I remember when I lost my father, when my father died. And I remember asking those same questions. Why would we paint? You know, why would I paint? When you lose somebody you love, people say that your life, you know, is actually broken in half. Like, you are somebody until you experience the loss of somebody you love. And I remember that was a moment for me. And I told myself, well, why would I paint? You know, what's the point of painting? What's the point of painting? What's the point of painting my father? Like, my initial thought is I'm going to paint my dad. You know, he's gone. I want to paint them to try to, I don't know, have a conversation to, once again with this person that is gone. And through painting, maybe I can, I can just restart, rekindle that conversation. But I remember just sitting down and thinking, this, it's pointless. It, it's absolutely pointless. This is probably a, a time where I should be reflecting upon the purpose of my existence and the uh, futility of existence, and the fact that we are ephemeral beings. And there was something weird about that moment where I thought, well, painting is always going to feel absurd. It's going to always feel foreign and alien and ridiculous. Like, why paint? You could probably be helping people in so many other ways that are far more direct, that you could see the a result of your help almost way more immediately than just doing a painting. People usually criticize painting because they think that it speaks about the self. That's it. It's probably the most selfish act you can do. You just, you know, bunker down in your studio and you just do a little drawing or a painting. Why? Because you want to do it for yourself, you know. And your reasons could be the most benign and the most honest. You could speak about self-growth, about self-recognition. But people would be like, well, yeah, it's still about you. How is that helping anything? How is thinking about painting, about colors, how is that helping anything? How is that going to help you understand that your father is not here? That's what I told myself. This is ridiculous. That, those are the moments. Those are the toughest moments where you see painting as just this absurd act of nothingness, you know? And then you try to convince yourself, well, throughout history, there's been amazing paintings that have moved people and they have taken people out of very, very dark moments in their lives as a great song can move you or a great book can move you. A great painting can do the same thing. An image is inherently incredibly, incredibly powerful. So I told myself, yeah, so that's the value in what we do. Just incredibly powerful images. But then I thought, what is this about then? Just trying to make incredibly powerful images? Like, this is only going to be justified? The act of painting is only going to be justified if we create very powerful images? Is that it? Is that the only way out? I remember just feeling very deflated and saying, there's only one way that I'm going to understand if this is all pointless, if this is all for nothing, if this is all just an incredibly superficial act, and I'm going to be honest with myself, and I'm going to keep on painting. And I'm going to see what happens and I'm going to see how I feel about it. And I'm going to see if my inner self is telling me, dude, what are you doing? This is dumb. Like there's no connection. You are not understanding anything about yourself through this dumb act, through this ridiculous act. And this amazing thing happened. When I started painting, even though it was strange, I got to a point where it just didn't feel awkward, where I wasn't judging myself for thinking about paint, for understanding myself through paint, for thinking about color, for thinking about color choices, and all these things that just, again, seem so, so superficial and trivial when compared to everything else that goes on in the world. Because who cares about values or who cares about hues or who cares about temperature when the outside world is struggling to try and understand its own nature. I found that it did give me clarity, but clarity in the sense that I understood who I was. I understood the things that were important for me through the aid of paint, 
through the help of the act of painting, I was able to understand the relationship I had with my father, the nature of that relationship. And I didn't have to be painting him. I wasn't trying to convey all those feelings through a painting that would then be the masterpiece that I would do of my father. It had nothing to do with that. I could be painting anything. I could be painting a chair. And while painting the chair, I would choose those moments. I would choose that time to reflect upon everything that was going on in my life. And the hope that you have is that if you give yourself that time to just really, really concentrate and understand who you are and just ask yourself questions and just fight to get to those answers, you hope that in the end, when you come out the other side of this act of painting, you are a more understanding person. And that's what it's about. And this is tough. This is tough. Because those things that are happening outside, they are impacting you. It's not that you can close your door from your studio and you can shut down everything and just say, I'm going to concentrate on something that's beautiful about this world, which is art, and I'm just going to do my painting and I'm going to be above it all. And we should just create and speak about everything that's beautiful because everything else is just the ugly side of history. I forget where I read it, but they said that art history is the the history of the beautiful side of the human being while you know the rest of history it just speaks about our terrible horrible inhumane nature and i was like you can't disconnect the two my whole life i've understood that i am one i am one human being i cannot break myself into two i cannot be a human being and then be a painter you know i cannot be a father and then be a painter. I couldn't be a son and then understand myself as a painter when I lost my dad. No, everything affects everything. You are a single human being, a single human being. So it amazes me how many times we are encountered with this thing where we think that we can just paint regardless of it. And sometimes, and this is true, sometimes people just expect us to just paint through it all. You just paint, blindly paint, just sit down and paint, just shut up and paint. That's all that we do. And if you're good at it, then you have this responsibility to other human beings to, again, just shut up and paint. It's like, we didn't come here to hear about your dad. We didn't come here to hear about how tough it was. Don't make us uncomfortable with that. Please, don't ever. Just give me a nice picture of your dad. Just paint the nice painting, and we'll be fine with that. Well, we will understand your struggle, but we will do it only so by looking at a picture that can move us. If you don't have that, if you don't give us that, we don't want to hear the other part. So just paint. And I'm sorry, but that's impossible. That's absolutely impossible because, again, you can't. You can't. If you separate the human being in me from the painter, I would just disappear. I would be broken. I would be good for none of those. I wouldn't be a good human being. I wouldn't be a good painter because I learn how to be a good human being through painting. Well, my hope is that I can learn how to be a good human being through painting. So, yeah, in moments where everything else seems bigger than life because it is when we speak about paint or painting you know what is going to be so important about that it's so hard to see the act of painting is nothing but just trivial when when you really really compare it with you know the very important fundamental aspects of humanity and yet and yet i think we answer those questions when we sit down and paint and that's all we can do that is all we can do. I have chosen a path in my life where I see the world through painting. That's the lens in which I see it through because that is the way I connected with this universe. While it may seem like a lesser conversation, I don't think it is. I, I don't. Because it is about trying to figure things out. It really is. So for everyone that's expecting me to just kind of I don't know. Just shut up and paint. Just paint the nice apple and be done with it and just 
tell us how to do it and <laughs> and that's it or if you are going to speak don't stare at anything you know don't say anything that could piss anyone off it's so easy when you just say yeah i'm not going to be part of anything i'm just going to paint i'm just going to be in my corner here painting i don't want to bother anyone i just want to do a pretty little painting just peek my head out just a little bit say hey here's painting and painting is beautiful don't forget about the beautiful things in life and that's it and people will be like oh yeah thank you for reminding us of the beautiful things in life no i have a voice and it shows up i don't i don't do uh revolutionary paintings you know that's not my subject matter that's not what i do it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what i paint is what i know and I'll only speak about what I know and what moves me. And I speak from a heart. And if that bothers people, then so be it. So be it. That's the painter that I am. You can't have one without the other. You really can't. So uh, next week, next week we're going to do something, I was going to say like totally different, but I think it's it actually is being born from some of the aspects that I was conscious about this week, some of the things that I felt about this week. And honestly, you know, with Danny, we had planned like a year's worth of weekly themes. And uh, we have followed, I don't know, Danny was telling me, but I think we followed like four, <laughs> the first four. And then we've been, <laughs> we've been really just eyeballing it. Um, but, you know, we try to make it kind of organic so that the lessons that are learned from one week can actually be used in the uh, week after. And I think that that's, uh, that's pretty cool. That way, hopefully, it just doesn't feel disjointed and we, we can speak about past paintings and see them as past experiences that actually teach us a ton. Just know that we're going to be here next week and painting not to try and forget everything this is not painting as escapism. This is not painting like we are not aware of anything that's going on. This is trying to figure out everything that's going on while we paint. <laughs> We're going to use painting as our ally. So thank you guys again. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thank you. Bye.